Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome our Zoom family, our cyber cousins, our internet in-laws, our Facebook family. We want to welcome you to Walking in the Word Wednesday. Walking in the Word Wednesday, where we open up the Word of God and we let God speak to our hearts. We pray that you had an awesome week thus far as we come to this third week in January, this new year. We thank God for each and every one of you. And we pray that there's a word from the Lord. Speaking of prayer, let's go to in prayer right now as we lift up our family and friends and all those who need to hear from the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your spirit. I thank you for my sister and brother on Facebook my sister and brother on YouTube, my family, Lord, that have come together tonight to walk in the word this evening. God, we need a refreshing God. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for a fresh anointing of your Holy Ghost. Now have your way, Lord, as we open up the word of God. Refresh, energize, set the captive free so that you will be glorified. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. And these things we ask in your holy and righteous name. Amen. Amen. Once again, welcome to Walking in the Word Wednesday. I am Pastor Norwood, the senior pastor of the Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church, and we pray if you're tuning in and this is your first time that you show up at 2119 St. Emmanuel Street, Houston, Texas, 77003. On Saturdays, or Sabbaths, Lord, from 10 to 1 o'clock, our Sabbath school starts at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock is our divine worship, and if you're tuning in, we pray that you join us this coming Saturday, this coming Sabbath, for a word from the Lord. So let's get into it this evening. Let's get into it this evening as we walk in the word, as we walk in the word. Tonight, the Holy Ghost put this heavy in my spirit. Elder Williams, he put this heavy in my spirit. Eating from the wrong fruit tree. Eating from the wrong fruit tree. We, was in, we were in a Daniel fast. This uh this couple of weeks, I know that you've been faithful, amen, <laughs> those who are doing the Daniel fast, and I was thinking about fruit, and I said, what can I tell your people tonight, Lord? And the Holy Ghost reminded me, tell them too many times that we're eating from the wrong fruit tree. Let's get into it this evening. Matthew 7, 16 through 20 says this, you should know them by their fruits, mercy, do men grab the grapes of thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruit, you will know them. And let me say this right here. Understand, what kind of fruit are you bearing? That's the question for this evening. What kind of fruit are you bearing? And we're going to unpack this this evening because I truly believe in the body of Christ. We're talking about evangelism. Don't you know that we can win people by the fruit that we're bearing or, the, or lose people by the fruit that we're not bearing? Let me say that one more time as we talk about evangelism. We can win people by the good fruit we're bearing, or we can lose people by the fruit that we're not bearing. Let's get into it this evening. What you consume is what you will produce. Think about that, Sister Wilson. What you consume is what you will produce. So this evening, I want you to really reflect on this thought, what you consume. So the question is, what are you consuming? There's a reason for the question. So let's look into it this evening. What you consume is what you will produce. Satan's fruit tree versus the fruit of the spirit. Satan's fruit tree. And there's a choice. Every child of God, every person on this planet has to make a choice because we decide which tree we will eat from. We decide which tree will we eat from. Satan's fruit tree are the fruit of the spirit. If you want to take a screenshot, you can, because tonight we got to understand there is a difference between Satan's fruit tree and the fruit of the spirit. A lot of people are sick, Sister Wilson, because too many Christians are eating from Satan's fruit tree and do not realize it. 
Help me, Holy Ghost, Sister Braxton. A lot of Christians, a lot of people who call themselves Christians are eating from the wrong tree. So let's look into it this evening. Eating from Satan's fruit tree. Let's talk about what does it look like to eat from Satan's fruit tree. Satan's fruit tree focus on what the flesh desires. There you go. Satan's fruit tree focus on, on what the flesh desires. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. I am not making this up. It's in the Bible. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Let me go up to 20. Witchcraft. I've heard people say, well, you know, pastor, you know, that there, there's nothing wrong with Halloween. Yes, there is. There's nothing wrong with the little Ouija board. Yes, there is. We got to be very mindful of the things we allow into our houses, the, the things that we're consuming, because Satan is using these things, these elements to bring in division and spirits of ungodliness into our homes. There is something wrong with Ouija boys. There is something wrong when we celebrate holidays that are not godly. I'm not saying that you, your children should not have fun. I'm not saying that you should not enjoy life. That's not what I'm saying. But some things we should never entertain because they're not of God. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 says this. These six things does the Lord hate. These seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, that's when we look down on people. A lying tongue, you all know what that means. Hands that shed innocent blood. Let me stop right there. There's a book, Elder Williams. There's a book. Innocent blood is not just that someone who kills somebody or someone who stabs somebody. Don't you know hands that shed innocent blood are individuals who scandalize people's name. Individuals who, 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 who tear down people's character and reputation. That is not of God. We call ourselves Christians. We, we call ourselves seven-day Adventists, born-again Christians. But this is what the Bible says. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that divides wicked imaginations, feet that be swift to running to mischief, a false witness that speaks lies, and he that sows discord among the brethren. When we eat from Satan's tree, these things become very easy to the person. When we're eating from Satan's tree, the pride of life, that's from Satan's tree. When we eat from Satan's tree, uh, uh, it's easy to tell lies. When when person eats from Satan's tree, they devise wicked imagination schemes that undermine. Instead of building up the kingdom of God, their heart's desire is to tear down the kingdom of God. That's when a person eats from Satan's tree. Here's some more. Hatred, unforgiveness. The Bible says, how can I forgive you if you can't forgive your brother? Coveting, worrying and fear. The Bible says, fear not. The Bible says, don't worry. Bitterness, selfishness, gossip, anger, holding on to offenses. If you are a child, I mean, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I know somebody may not like this, what I'm about to say, but that's okay. Pray for your pastor. If you want to be a Christian, understand this, that offenses will come. If you call yourself a born-again Christian following Jesus, Jesus was offended. Jesus was offended when one day he rode in, hell, Jesus, hallelujah. The next time the same people saying, crucify him. Jesus was offended when Judas betrayed him, his inner circle. And can I say speak to somebody? Don't you know the worst offense comes from people who are close to you? It, it, it's, it's offensive because you would think that people would love you so much that they would not handle you that way. So let me pray for somebody right now. This wasn't in my, in my, in my lesson, but I got to pray. Are you holding on to offense this evening? Are you holding on to hatred 
And we're going to pray again at the end. Are you holding on to worry and fear and gossip? The Holy Spirit is telling somebody, maybe on YouTube, maybe on Facebook, that you can let that go and be born again. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, my brother, my sister, God, who's watching this, Lord, they're holding on to an offense, God, an offense that probably happened years ago, or maybe it happened yesterday. Maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's a child. Maybe it's a friend. God, give them peace right now. Father, give them peace, whether it's bitterness, whether it's worry and fear, give them strong, give them peace, God. Whether there's coveting, remove it, Father. Whether there's selfishness, God, Lord, let them know, Lord, that you will bless them abundantly. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for those on Facebook. Lord, right now, bless them right now because you have them to tune in tonight, God, because there's a word with their name on it. So, God, right now, help us to eat from the right tree, God. Father, bind up anything that's not like you, unforgiveness, hatred, anger, gossip. The Bible says, my brothers and sisters, get angry and sin not. So let me tell you what that looks like. We should be angry if we see a child of God being mistreated. We should get angry, Lord, when we see the homeless not being cared for. There is nothing wrong with being angry. It's how we process it. If I was in church, I would say, somebody say process. It's the way you process that anger. Here is worldly anger. Worldly anger is getting mad at a person, still mad, going to bed, staying mad, not having a conversation with that person, letting that anger build up inside of you. The very next day, you're plotting and scheming how you can take out that anger on that another person. That's not of God. But righteous anger is righteous indignation that you get angry when people are mistreated. You get what makes God mad should make you mad. Let me say that one more time. What makes God mad is what makes you make us mad as children of God. God gets upset when he's seeing the least of these mistreated. God gets upset when he sees people who are mistreating the man and woman of God. God gets upset when he sees the homeless, the motherless, the, the people who need help not being helped. Those are things that upset God because God is God of the press. He wants to see his people being taken care of. But these are the things that Satan does. So let's keep on moving. Eating from Satan's fruit tree will make you pay a price higher than you want to pay. Keep you in a situation longer than you want to stay. Keeps distracting you so you don't want to pray. I got to say that one more time, Sister Brex. I like that, Sister Ines. Eating from Satan's fruit tree will make you pay a price higher than you want to pay. Keep you in a situation longer than you want to stay. Keep distracting you so you don't want to pray. So why do we keep on eating from Satan's fruit tree? We got a, we, we, we get an energistion. We get spiritual energistion when we eat from Satan's fruit tree. We get spiritually poisoned when we keep on holding on to bitterness and unforgiveness and anger and all those things that go against the word of God. And tonight, God said he wants to deliver somebody. If anyone who is dealing with anger, if anyone is dealing with, with immorality, if anyone is dealing with gossip, God wants to deliver you tonight. Stay on the line. Let's keep on going. How to produce fruit of the spirit. Oh, I like this. How to produce fruit of the spirit. Oh, I see the chat lighting up this evening. Amen. I see the, yeah, give us a clean heart. That's it. That's it. The chat is lighting up. Let's look at this fruit of the spirit. Every born again child of God should be producing fruit of the spirit. If you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself a seven day Adventist born again Christian, we should be producing fruit of the spirit. Here it is. This fruit is always in season. And if you drive in Houston, I love Houston. Houston has grown, grown on me. But if you're on 610, 45, you need patience. Amen, somebody. If you ever been in traffic in Houston, you need that fruit. Amen, somebody. We need some patience. We need love. We need joy. We need generosity, peace, faithfulness, self-control, kindness, gentleness, peace. These are fruits of the spirit, faithfulness, fruits of the spirit. When we are born again, we will produce good fruit. We want to continue to eat 
the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So let's find out how to get these fruits. The fruit of the Spirit is the fruit of God's work in our lives. When we are obedient to the Holy Spirit, not the fruit of our own strength and produces all joy and peace, Romans 15, 13, all lowliness and justice with long suffering, Ephesians 4, 2, for the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. They will know you. They will know me by our fruit. And don't you know, could it be possible that God is sending that person that gets on your last name, that God sent that person that threw you on the bus, that God sent that individual so that you can show them some fruits of the Spirit? Ephesians 5, 9, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Colossians 1, 11, such abundant fruit bearing can only occur when we are strengthened with all might by the power of the Holy Spirit. And his is referred to as the fruit of the Spirit. There are people in this world, my, my brothers and sisters, that are looking for a little joy, a little peace. They are looking for those who call themselves Christians to be in self-control. They are looking for people to be righteous and holy. The world needs more fruit of the Spirit. Number one, how do you get this fruit? Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. My brothers and sisters, my family, my cyber cousins, my internet in-laws, God is telling his people tonight, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek God's face, have some FaceTime, do a duo, duo with God. God will turn, show up, and he will show out. Number two, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Romans 10, 9 through 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. For with the heart a man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confess is made unto salvation. Oh, my brothers and sisters, this is powerful. A lot of people talk about Jesus, but very few people know Jesus. I'm going to say that one more time. A lot of people talking about Jesus, but very few people actually know Jesus. And God is looking for a relationship with those who call themselves Christians with Jesus Christ. We are living in a time where Jesus is literally knocking at the door. And he's waiting for those professed Christians to have an intimate relationship with Jesus. If you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart, then you should love your neighbors. You should love the homeless. You should love that member. You should love that person or this person because God loves you. We should love individuals. Yes, I know they got on your last nerves. Yes, I know they did some very sketchy things. But God says, if you, how can he forgive you if you don't forgive them? And we got to understand, we're living in a season where God is checking the record. He, does, he did not say, and watch this, he did not say that you have to be the ace boom coon again, that you have to be a match. But we forgive people, not for them, but for ourselves. And we love them. We don't have to love their ways. We don't have to keep on having a conversation with them. But we got we still love them. I like what the psychologist says. You can love them from a distance. Number three, we must be born again, born of the spirit. If we are to see the kingdom of God, the kingdom that consists of power. Jesus. Jesus said, not see, we but they're not in Christ because if they were in Christ, there's some things they would not say, some things they would not do. They would be building up the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? How can he He said, let me break that down to somebody. We got baptism down to a science. We can dip them. We can bring them up. 
But how many times have you seen someone who's baptized says water and of the spirit? Because it's the Holy Spirit that will find people to the things going around them. Because what happens when a person comes to the church, their eyes are wide open. They see people who say one thing but do another. And sometimes they get discouraged. But when they're baptized in the Holy Spirit, they're not going to let no man, no woman, no boy or girl keep them from serving God. So, yes, we're born of the water. But then we got to be born of the Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that will grow us up from the inside out. I like what somebody said. Let me see if I can repeat this. They said the word of God will blow you up. The Holy Spirit by itself will mess you up. But when you have the Holy Spirit and the word of God together, it will grow you up. Amen. So the Holy Spirit and the word of God will grow up a person in Christ. That which is born of the flesh is the flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvin, now that I say unto thee, you must be born again. The wind blows where it listens, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it come and whether it goeth. So in everyone that is a spirit that is born of the spirit, my God. We imagine, Sister Wilson, if we just didn't have people who were baptized, but was baptized in the Holy Ghost, baptized in the Holy Spirit. What if we just spent some time Focus on being baptized, receiving the Holy Ghost. Imagine what would happen to Berean. Imagine what would happen to your home. Because of disciples, there was a few, maybe 12, was filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, they were chicken at first. They denied, some denied Christ. But when they got filled with the Holy Ghost, they turned the world upside down. And God is looking for a few people. They are filled with the Holy Spirit to turn this Houston upside down, to turn this nation upside down, if we would just get filled with the Holy Ghost. Number four, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If we want the fruits of the Spirit, we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receive it, and he that seeketh, his find it. To him that knocks, the door shall be open. If a son should ask bread of you, that is a father, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will, you give, will, he, will he for a fish give him a serpent? serpent? Or if he should ask for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? And listen what the word of God says. If ye then been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more should your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? You miss your shout. You miss your shout. You miss your Zoom shout. You miss your internet shout. If you being evil, me being evil, know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more should the father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Because God knows we can't do anything within ourselves. We can't pray right, we can't walk right, we can't preach right without the Holy Spirit. We can't even love each other right. We can't even get to heaven without the Holy Spirit. And all we got to do is ask. And you may not feel anything. You may not get goosebumps. But keep on asking and watch how the Holy Spirit shows up in your life. Number five, we got to walk in the Spirit. The fruit of the spirit as opposed to the works of the flesh mentioned above is manifested in those who walk according to the spirit. I say then, walk in the spirit and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, five. To how do we walk in the spirit so that our works of the flesh no longer come from forth in our life, but rather the fruit of the spirit? We have to crucify the flesh. In order to walk in the spirit, we have to die. We got to read the word of God. I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, but if we want to have favor, if we want to walk in the anointing, How do you walk in the spirit? You got to pray in the spirit. You got to ask God to fill you with this Holy Spirit. Have a one. Do with God. 
We have to pray in the spirit and watch what we're doing. We got to let the Holy Ghost every part of our being. Seven, study and share the good news of the Bible. Study and share the chain of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. We got to live that. Don't you know, Sister Wyndham, the best evangelistic effort are the people on this line? You are the best your testimony that can set somebody free. We should not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's salvation to the courthouse, to the church house, to the outhouse news of Jesus Christ. When we tell people what God has done for us, that is the best evangelistic tool. Y'all remember the woman at the well, for those who don't know, in the Bible, you may not be familiar with the Bible, you tuning in, there's a story in the Bible where Jesus met this woman at the well. Jesus talked to her and she was not feeling Jesus. But when Jesus revealed who he was, she ran and go went, got a village. Come on, somebody. She ran and went to a village to come see a man who knew everything about me. Don't you know God knows everything about you and he still loves you? God knows everything about me. He still loves me. And we, we have a mandate from God to go tell everyone, Come see a man. Come to Church of Berean on Sabbath, on Saturday. Come see a man. We're not talking about Pastor North. We're not talking about the praise team. We are talking about come and see Jesus Christ in the house. So once again, we got to walk in the spirit. Holy Ghost to tell somebody, stop eating from the wrong tree. Stop eating from Satan's tree. Let's eat from the Holy Spirit tree. Let's connect, my brothers and sisters. www.barin.sd.houston, 713 654 We want to connect with you. If you're a member of the church, keep on coming. Keep on being a blessing to the Berean. Keep on being a blessing to the community. But if you're tuning in on Facebook and YouTube, we want to meet you. We want to talk with you. 713-654-8945. And if you want to be a blessing to this ministry, this to keep this online ministry to keep reaching men and women, boys and girls. You can send your love offering, your tithe, your offering to Berean SDA Church, PO Box 1300, Houston, Texas 77251, or 2119-03. And that's our physical address. If you tune in for the first time, I'm two one zero three we would love to see you and we pray that you would love to see us because berean has a passion for loving and saving people the kingdom of god and let's not forget about our mobile app if you want to take this experience with you go to the apple store download the app go to the google play and download the app, and there you will have the sermons, a nominal app. Download, download the app so you, you can take this experience with you. Amen. Prayer. I pray that after tonight, we are intentional about walk in the spirit. Love. Of joy, peace, self-control, and watch how God changed your life. That's the challenge this evening. I know it's, it's, it's hard for a lot of us to walk in the sense. All you got to do is ask for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, he will give it. If you want to walk in the Spirit, I'm going to say a prayer right now. If you want to eat from the fruit of the Holy Spirit, let me pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for this lesson study, Father. Father, my brother and sister on the line, on Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube, God. Father, they may have been eating from Satan's tree, Lord. Let them know tonight they don't have to eat from Satan's tree anymore. Hatred, jealousy, discord, envy, whatever it is, God, 
they can choose to eat from the fruit of the Holy Spirit and have good fruit, have the, the fruit of the Spirit, because what we eat, what we consume, we will produce. So God, if they want to produce a good life, a holy life, a righteous life, God, I'm asking tonight, Lord, that you turn my brother and sister, even somebody on this line, even me, God, give us a passion, Lord, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, a passion, Lord, to continue to eat from the fruit of the tree of life, the fruit of the Spirit. And not only eat from the fruit of the Spirit, but walk in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, and live in the Spirit. So, God, we thank you this evening. We praise you. We honor you. And these things we ask in your name. Amen. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters. May God bless you and keep you. Take care. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.